Hi, welcome to a tutorial for the inventory and pricing workbook from Accounting for Jewelers. I just wanted to give you a quick run through of what you can expect with this workbook. This is ideally for someone that does a lot of one of a kind custom work, or if you have collections, it's great because you can price you know, each SKU and manage the number of finished items that you have on hand. When you open up the, the spreadsheet, it opens to the summary tab. Um, you can click up here directly to the instructions, which is on the last tab. Read through this. I definitely recommend it. It has some good tips. One of the things that you can do easily is enter in your company on the first page, and it does that across all the pages. And then, you know, what I recommend also is doing this for each year. So at 2017, you will save this one as 2016, open it up, save it as 2017, and carry it forward so that you have, you retain that history of what went on in 2016 or whatever prior year. So it's really good because you get to keep that ongoing history with you know rolling it forward to the new spreadsheet, but you also retain that spot check. So if you ever needed to go look, you could look at what happened in 2016 and that's really helpful. So all of these yellow cells are pre-formulated for you. You can always look, click in a cell and see up in this formula bar where that information is coming from. So this one's coming from the finished jewelry tab, cell V30. And so you can see where that coming this coming from. It's coming from the quantity on hand. And so one of the things about this spreadsheet is that it is manually updated by you. So you don't have barcodes. You have to come in here and enter in your purchases into the spreadsheet, the relevant tab. So we've got your, your metals, which is split by wire and sheet, or you know, you can refine it even more. Um, findings such as jump rings, diamonds if you use them, gemstones, beads, and you can delete the tabs that you don't need to customize it for your specific business and you can rename them to whatever you want. So it can be as customizable as you want it. I mean the, the spreadsheets are a back end to all of the inventory programs that you see so you really can do anything in here. You could come in here and even with the chains, you know, if you wanted to add a picture of what it looks like so that you know, rather than trying to say, oh, it was a Rolo that was two millimeters, um, sometimes, you know, we're visual creatures, so that can help. But also in the finished jewelry, you can add the picture of the finished good. So you have, you build out a database that has the picture, all of the components that go into the finished piece and you're also managing the quantities of what you've purchased and what you've got on hand as well as what you've sold. And this is a really good back end to managing your inventory values in an accounting program. So it's very comprehensive. Um, again, all of your data in here, you can enter in the prices and then as you use it, you'll have to come in here and update the quantity in stock. So this doesn't manu this doesn't automatically update. So let's say you were gonna use this casting in a finished good. You could come in here and grab that amount. So you just put it equal sign and we're gonna go to castings and you received eight. The unit price is 78. So that's gonna be our cost for one piece. And so you do this for each item and every component that goes into the finished piece. And so this, this formula is based on David Feldman's pricing formula. So the MUF and the DUF are factors that you multiply your materials and designs depending on how difficult it was to source the materials or you know paying your designer yourself um, for the uniqueness. So it's the materials uniqueness factor and the design uniqueness factor. So it's a, a little markup and it, you don't even have to do one at all. Um, but if you're using like black gold or a different alloy um, or, you know, the design is really different and unique, you can pay yourself for that. 
the allocated overhead is based on your income statement for a given period and how many pieces you've made during that period. So um, the more refined you are with your accounting program, the easier it is to get this number. You can see that this one is um, multiplied by 0.18. So it's 18 cents on the dollar of your materials and labor is what that means. Um, and this reinvestment profit is that for every eight cents of the dollar of your costs, that's going to go back into your business. And so it's important because you don't get paid for doing the research and development and finding the stones all the time you spent designing something. You don't get paid for that in the metals and gem costs unless you're, you are adding, adding it into your labor. So most likely you aren't. So this is where you have to make sure you're covering yourself for that stuff. And that's why I really like this formula. So this always gives your actual bare cost. So it only shows without any markup. So you have to cover that much. Then the wholesale price, you know, this, this can vary depending on where you are, who you're selling to, what your products are. Most of the time it's a two time markup. Sometimes it's 2.2 to 2.4. And then this is kind of a, a friends and family markup. And then the retail markup is usually two to two and a half times. Um, and again, that depends on who you're selling it to and where you are, because costs in New York, let's say, are a lot more expensive than Oklahoma. Then the quantity completed, you manually enter this amount. This is just however many of this product you made. So if it's one of a kind, it's just going to be one. And this is where you do, once you sell them, you always have to come up here and, and enter how many you sold. The benefit of using a spreadsheet is that you do have complete control over it but it does require you to come in and manage it. If you have an online management system, you still have to go in and manually enter when you order something and when you make something. So it's really not that much different, but when you sell something, then it's all automatically updated online. So this is not automatic. So you have to come in and update it because it's, it doesn't integrate with your accounting software or a website or anything like that. But this is then populated by the formula to let us know what's on hand. And that feeds into the summary page so that we know the value of what's currently in stock. And then the inventory value is the quantity on hand multiplied by the bare cost. So it's not with the, the markups, nothing else. And it's not with your personal labor. It's only with outsourced labor. So we have to consider that too. If you put in your labor, then we want to change that formula to only capture the metal costs. And then this is if you know if you if you wanted to keep maintain a history of things that you've made but that you're make, not making anymore, then you can use this to to exit out. And so then you have um, if you put an X in it, it turns red. <laughs> so pretty much everything in here is pre-formulated to help you. Um, and then this is also helpful because, and I've got notes always, anytime you see a little red mark, it's because I've left a note for you. You could change this to be whatever your current markup is. And it's a good way to compare what your current listing price is versus what this formula tells you. Because while it's really good for this, this formula is excellent to get a base and like, you know, your bearings, I guess, with your pricing to make sure you are covering all of your costs it's not necessarily in line with the market always. So um, playing with your hourly wage for the, your labor cost, playing with the markups for the wholesale and the retail price, as well as how much you're giving overhead and reinvestment profit, drastically change these prices. So you can play with these. And, and also this is where it's really important to, to have a good handle on who your customer is because that dictates very much what your pieces are going to sell for because it really doesn't matter what the price is what we come up with it matters what someone will pay for it always this is going to be what you're actually listing it at so it's um and you can add lines and you know things to look out for is if you came in here and added a line we just want to make sure that the formulas came down so you can grab all of these formulas and pull them down. And then you just wanna make sure that it's capturing the same information. 
And depending on your comfort level with Excel, you know, you can you can take classes online. Always YouTube is a great source if you have a question on how to do something or just Google. But I created this so that it's easy to have control over your inventory as well as a customized pr pricing structure and really being able to understand what you're buying and what you're using and your costs that go into the finished good. And then also from you know my accounting perspective, making sure that we have the correct inventory values. So you know, the cost of goods sold is never a cost of goods sold until you actually sell it. So all of your purchase prices of all your raw materials and labor that you pay to contractors and casters and setters, all of that is an inventory asset until you actually sell it. And so this is the spreadsheet that I recommend using to really manage that. And also what I want you to do is I've put in demo example information in here, but you'll want to come in here and, and remove it, put in your information, you know, so don't keep this information in here because it comes over to this summary page and would mess up your actual values. So just keep in mind that this is fake information and that you want to come in and put your actual information in here and replace that. If you have any questions for me, please do not hesitate to ask. I am always open to improving this spreadsheet to help you. I created it for you so that you can manage your inventory and understand your business better. So I always want to improve my business and I can't do that without you. So please let me know what you find complicated or that I didn't explain enough um, or any issues that you run into with this spreadsheet because I am happy to improve it and help you customize it for you. So you can always reach me at support at accountingforjewelers.com or call during normal business hours to 615-975-5406 and we are happy to help you.